there's another uh, trend which is location um, that um, the Chinese government is um, encouraging um, uh, companies to move inland and so what they call the south and the east is, is very well um, industrialized a lot of manufacturing it's, it's very well developed in inside China Wuhan and in, in is, is not so well uh, developed um, and so they're encouraging companies to come <coughs> inside what that means for us is that um, you can't fly to Hong Kong and go to Shenzhen to your manufacturer anymore now they're in the middle of nowhere and uh, or soon will be and you've, it, it's going to add even more um, difficulty um, just traveling to uh, whoever's making your, your parts. So I think that's that will probably continue. Um, part of that is also the opening up of Malaysia and Thailand. We all believe that we will get the best price for a component in Asia, and I will tell you that that's not always the case. Many of the technology parts suppliers will still offer better pricing in the U.S. So that complicates the manufacturing strategy, particularly if you've made a decision to manufacture your boards offshore. So what's evolved um, is these blended models where some components absolutely need to be controlled from the U.S. And you need to understand that because it absolutely plays into the total cost of, of ownership of your board. In the first uh, production run, you may want to consider running in the U.S., but if you want to decide to do the first production in China, that's fine, but you have to just be prepared to send a team to China when they do the ramp up, because they need to be there to do the approval, right? You don't, you don't, don't want to end up have a, a, a whole bunch of product that build wrong, you know, not what you're looking for, you know, and, and sometimes it could be as simple as like, you know, hey, the plastic a little scratch on it, you know, I don't want that little, little tiny scratch, but if you don't, have people there to do the approval, no one can approve for you, right? You have to have someone there to do it for you. So uh, I think that's one of my opinions. Really understanding the product, the components of the product, what the product mix actually comprises of, is I think very critical at the early stage. I think when you are this way, <laughs> uh, when you are faced with, you know, uh, bringing a product to market that the street price is going to be $299, $199, you know, you're always struggling with cost, right? So, but even in that, you have to look at the product mix uh, and the components of the products and say, how much of that is actually electronic components? How much of that is labor and assembly? And how much of that is fabricated parts? So in adding to what Dior was saying, plastics are very expensive to build here, right? sheet metal, die casting, fabrication, uh, PCBs are very expensive to build in the US. So the natural progression of that is to have a hybrid model. So in considering offshoring and onshoring, looking at the product, the quantity of fabricated components in the product, the costs associated with that, then of course there is labor and so on. I think looking at all those mixes is pretty important.